Hello everyone, welcome to another video of Knock Relearning. So in this tutorial, we are going to look at the fundamentals of Docker and some project ideas around it. Okay, let us try to first quickly answer one of the rudimentary questions of why do we need Docker? Oh, so if you are familiar with any of the programming languages like Python or JavaScript, you must have also heard the term of virtual environment. So the need for virtual environments or in programming languages uh, is that it separates all the dependencies from one particular program or project from other. So similar uh, thing is also needed in terms of while uh, deploying or creating an application so that all your uh, application related memory allocations or resources that is being used by that particular application needs separation from all other services that are running in a particular computer. So with the help of Docker or any virtual machine, we are able to achieve this separation. So the next problem that we face, usually while deployment, is related to resource sharing. Uh, so you cannot afford to deploy uh, one particular application on a single machine. Okay. You need to be able to uh, deploy multiple applications or multiple softwares on one single machine so that you can keep your cost down and optimize the machine to its uh, fullest. So with the help of any virtual machines, or dockers we are able to deploy multiple applications on a single computer and uh, have that scaled up and scaled down or uh, whenever it is needed so there is docker engine or a hypervisor in virtual machines which allocates or uh, resources like cpu or ram or any other memory depending on the need of a particular application and this is all managed internally uh, via docker or any other hypervisor which maintains or allocates resources appropriately whenever it is needed. So the next problem that we want to solve is related to portability. So suppose you have created a great application in your Windows PC, but now you want to deploy that to a Linux based server, or you want to roll that out to a client who is using Mac OS. So most of your dependencies might not actually work on those platforms. Uh, one common example that uh, we can take is when we all moved to ARM based architecture in M1 chips from Apple. Many of the popular libraries like Pandas and NumPy were throwing bugs related to architectural issues. So to avoid such kind of issues, we want to have a common platform in which all of our softwares will run and it can be easily uh, shared across multiple peers who are using various operating systems. So Docker provides us that platform on top of which we can run our applications and it will not have any issues running on multiple operating system and it won't depend on the architecture of your processor or your operating system. So along with all these features, Docker is highly scalable and you can put your containers in Kubernetes clusters and scale them up or whenever needed and scale them down whenever needed. Uh, and on top of this, Docker is also doing all these things in a much secured manner. Okay. So which makes this is an ideal choice while uh, doing DevOps tasks and deploying applications and building applications uh, on a common platform. So let us also look at uh, one of the common competitors of Docker, which is virtual machines uh, and how that works and how Docker is different from that. Okay. So in virtual machines, we have infrastructure, which is your hardware, your CPU processor, RAMs, uh, and such kinds of peripheral architectures. And on top of that, you have your hypervisor. Hypervisor is responsible to allocate resources to each of your applications as they need. Okay, so each application will have its guest OS. It could be Linux, Windows, Mac OS, or anything, and in which your application runs. So if you have five applications running, each will have its own OS, and hypervisor will be managing all these things. However, in Docker, we have infrastructure. Then we actually have the host OS which could be your Windows, Linux, or Mac OS. And on top of that, we have the Docker engine. Docker engine is similar to hypervisor and it's responsible to share resources across containers. And each container does not have its own OS. It is actually using the kernel or the OS of the operating system itself on which you're running Docker. So uh, just to observe, if you have five op uh, applications running in your virtual machine, you will have five OSs and say that each OS is taking a 10 GBs of or 20 GBs of storage, then you will have 
uh, for five application you will have 100 GB of storage just to run a minor application so this comes to our first advantages of docker over uh, virtual machines is that since it uses the same kernel as the operating system we do not need that much of storage space for storing an os and running applications on top of it which makes docker containers really uh, portable and small sized and it saves a lot of spaces in your disk the next thing since we do not have a dedicated os running for each application the boot up time for each container or each application is really less since it is already running on the host os and the host is, is already booted up so you do not need to spend much time in order to bring a service to scale or bring a service to life next thing that we want to focus more is on the support of version control systems so in docker you can actually control the version of your deployments or your images file that you create and track and roll back to previous versions and see the differences between one version of the, and the other version however in virtual machines such kind of feature is not at all present okay. uh, the next thing that we uh, need to look at is we can start multiple containers or multiple applications together in a uh, docker system and they can communicate with each other in a very easy manner however it is much more difficult in virtual machines another thing that is very uh, crucial about dockers is you can actually build images on top of another image so you have built an application and you want to use that application as a part of your another app bigger application so you can do that in a much more easier manner of uh, while dealing with dockers as compared to dealing with virtual machines so the next thing that we need to look at uh, is how you can install docker in your local pc okay so we will share this readme uh, file in the description below and you can follow this along uh, for all the links and resources okay. so over here you can go to this link of installing docker to your local pc and over here you can choose your operating system and download the installable file once you install that file you will be able to check whether docker is installed or not uh, you can just search for that application you can search for docker and once you have this application installed it will start running uh, in your pc and uh, it will show an interface like this once it is started uh, you can go to any of your command line tool or terminal and over there you can just type i hope my screen is visible or you can type docker version and if this particular command runs then your docker is installed in your machine uh, so now let us look at few of the terminologies uh, related to docker and see their differences okay so the first differences that we're going to see uh, is around docker images and docker containers okay so uh, if you are familiar with object oriented programming then you must have heard about classes and object of each classes so class is kind of a blueprint of how to create an object and object is an instant of a particular class so is the example for images and containers images are kind of blueprints of how to create a container and container is the actual application that is built from that blueprint okay so docker images contains a set of uh, instructions on what particular services do we need or uh, how are they going to interact what are, sort of commands do we need to run initially in order to bring this container to life and docker container is an instant or a real life existence of the image or the blueprint in order to create a container we need to run all the instruction from a docker file we need to create an image while writing instructions in a docker file mind you the docker file is an extensionless file which has commands uh, on how to create a particular container and we can run a docker container build command from this docker file in order to build a container from an image so the next difference that we are going to look at uh, is around docker file and docker compose so docker file uh, is a set of instruction of how you can create your image whereas docker compose is a command line tool or command line or uh, syntax that is used to run all the containers from docker compose.yaml file this uh, 
This is example of Docker file. Remember, Docker file does not have any extension. Oh, so and remember that we have discussed a pros of a Docker is that it can build images on top of another. So this Docker file is an example of that. Here we are building an image uh, using Docker file on top of an image of Alpine 3.4 version. Okay. So when we are creating this new image, we are going to install this image at first at a base and then all, run all these commands on top of it in order to create a new image out of it. Okay. So in docker compose.yaml file, you define all the settings related to a container. It can include the port mapping for, from that container to your local PC. Or it can also include memory or bandwidth or memory threshold allocation or CPU threshold allocation towards that particular uh, container. And it will compose of all the containers that need to initialize in order to run your application. So suppose you are uh, creating an application which has three services running in parallel and they all need to communicate with each other or they have to some have some port mapping with them. So you will write all these in your docker compose.yaml file and create three services and write them one underneath the other in order to initialize them all together. So let us jump to a few of the common project ideas or initial beginner project ideas around Docker. So first thing you can learn about all the Docker commands uh, from this particular URL. It is the official documentation from Docker around all the commands that are there at your disposal and what all uh, flags that you can use along with it, what are options that you can use along with it. Uh, just as an example, there's this one command called Docker images. It will list on all the images or in your uh, PC. So just to see this in action, I will just clear this. You can say Docker images and it will list all the images in your local computer. It will have the image name, the tag that you gave or the creator gave, the image ID. This is a unique hash key or uh, via which you can look at an image. When was this last created and what is the size in your disk that it occupies? Similarly, we have Docker container ls. It will give you the details about all the containers that are there. By default, it gives only uh, the containers which are running, but you can add this flag of all to list on all the containers which are not even running right now. So all these things and all the additional options that are there at our disposal, you can run it from, uh, you can know them from these particular URLs. Similarly, uh, we have documentation from Docker Compose as well, which will show you all the important flags that you can use in your YAML file and how you can build a multi microservice uh, com image out of it or container out of it. Okay. So these are two highly recommended uh, resources that you can go through and read about. So the next thing is uh, you can create your account in Docker Hub. So Docker is, is kind of similar to GitHub. You can set up your accounts in Docker Hub. Uh, there is free membership as well. And you can explore and uh, download containers and play around with them, download images and play around with them, create your own image, create your own version out of it. And again, push them back to uh, Docker Hub so that you can maintain a version uh, system of your microservice that you're going to build. So next uh, thing that we can do is you can, if you are familiar with uh, any of the API creating frameworks like Django, Fast API, or Flask in Python, or maybe Express in uh, Node.js, uh, then you can create an API and set that up uh, using Docker as a microservice and host that in any of the cloud platform. Uh, so if you are familiar with Heroku, then you can publish that to Heroku platform. And there are clear resources on how you can deploy your application in Heroku using Docker. Okay, so with this, you will have an end to end pipeline or uh, understanding of how you can create an application or uh, share it with your peers as well as deploy it in your uh, cloud system. Okay, other thing uh, is that you can use common tools like Airflow, which are already built into Docker containers or Docker compose files, and that you can install in your local PC and run that in Docker and maintain your day-to-day -day task or day-to-day -day schedules using Airflow in your local machine. Another thing uh, that you can do is you can build your own microservices 
or APIs or any microservice which has a lot of interaction with uh, each other. So it could be a set of microservices which are interacting with each other and also with the web and need to have some port allocations. You can set up some memory, memory or allocations to each of such microservices and run them in parallel. So this will give you a fair understanding about how and what all tools and what all infrastructure are there at your disposal use uh, while creating microservices using Docker. So with that note, uh, this session comes to end. So just to summarize, uh, we learned about why we actually needed Docker in the first place, what all problems uh, it did solve, what are the other solutions available in the market apart from Docker, and how they are different from Docker, what are the advantages of Docker on top of them, how you can install Docker, and how you can check whether it's running in your system or not, or uh, some terminological differences between images and containers, similarly Docker Compose and Docker File. And then we went around about learning a few of the basic project ideas that you can do with Docker. If you have liked this particular video, please share it with your friends and peers. Please give us your feedbacks and suggestions in the comment section below. And please subscribe to Nokri Learning for more such content. Thank you. Good day.